Hi folks, welcome to the final of the Team Regionals event. Only one game remaining and this is the situation. So we have uh, old Nanjing versus House Hanover in the final and uh, it's 1-1 after two games. And uh, the last one remaining is this one. So Xin uh, Yi for old Nanjing will be playing uh, Baratheon Assault from the Shadows. And uh, on the other side we have uh, from the, the House uh, Hanover team Leonard Paga playing Lannister, the house with the red door. It's uh, open deck lists in this event, so we can have a quick look. So this is Leonard's deck, it's a, a Shadows deck. The location that is usually chosen, or always chosen I should say, is Bowels of Casterly Rock. And uh, the rest of the locations are basically economy including Casterly Rock with not much bestow in the deck and uh, Flea Bottom is there we have the two standard events that the Shadows decks play Clever Feint and the Iron Bank will have its due also have Pinch here and all the characters basically have Shadow in this deck except for um, the Hound, three copies of him that's the, the first version, the three cost one of course and uh, Core Tywin is here, also Podrick technically does not have Shadow, and Kevin, and uh, the rest of the package is uh, all the usual Shadows cards that Lannister has access to, at, uh, mostly at three copies. The plot deck plays uh, the two Valors, so both uh, resets plus first Snow, just missing the Stranger I guess for the full set, and uh, also has three Economy plots and Close Call, which could be important uh, in some matchups. Uh, I think uh, it uh, did good work throughout this tournament but uh, in this particular game there is no Morghulis on the other side and no kill effects really so this is the deck that uh, Baratheon Assault from the Shadow so the Chinese team has and uh, what do we have here? So we have uh, yeah lots of locations uh, Apart from economy, there is also, of course, Black Cells, which you expect. There is Throne and Chamber, and also Storm's End, one of my favorite cards, to focus really on the Power Challenge, supported by Traitor to the Crown, uh, the staple card in this deck throughout the years. And this could be problems, I guess, for Lannister if uh, the Traitors find their way into play. And then you have uh, yeah, nice control over the Power Challenge and uh, the Dominance phase. What else do we have? We have uh, yeah, a couple of events here, so privilege position, if that could uh, hit something like uh, Clever Fane, that would be pretty nice, or Sin in Flames to take that card away. And the location, uh, the character base, so there is some lore for the Melisandre Neil, but also we have uh, Sir Eldon Estermont, who is a key card, he can stand Storm's End, he can stand uh, Black Cells, and also the thing I use him most for his um, standing northern encampment if uh, that somehow gets snelled but Lannist the Lannister deck will not really fight this deck for dominance so we'll see if that is necessary now is that is there anything else there is the Lena to stop stand probably not going to matter in this matchup and um, okay Shireen another thing that works with uh, the power challenges Past of Night Song to be searched for with the Lena, so uh, all pretty standard. And the plots here, so there is some economy here as well. We have uh, Pentoshi, we have Trade Roots and Blade Summer Fist. We have Peace and Prosperity as a possible opener because uh, lots of locations are too cost, so it can get you close to 8 gold, maybe 7, and uh, you can't really uh, counter that with Summer Harvest, but. Uh, yeah, with open deck lists that's uh, less efficient. Siege preparations as the draw, so if the game goes long we can expect this to be played and if it goes super long maybe even twice. Duharis is the reset and then there is also Clash of Kings. So if uh, board uh, state is favorable and for instance with Storm's End in play and all those traitors on the board, this could be a good plot to get ahead in power for the Baratheon deck and uh, let's join the game. So we are uh, 
in the marshalling phase. Let me just see if there is anyone joining me. Um, commentary not yet, but maybe we'll get someone uh, over the course of the game. Let me just um, invite people to commentate. We see if anyone joins. So in the meantime, let's see what the situation is. So Baratheon uh, sets up uh, Gates of the Moon. We have uh, a few characters as well, and we have a card in Shadows. And uh, uh, already is that already? Yeah, that's the card that was already used with um, with the agenda in the action window. So if there's nothing to disrupt um, the cards in hand, so if the opponent cannot do Red Priest or something like that, or uh, Old Bill Bone, then uh, I guess the best idea is just to wait. But uh, since Lannister has cards in Shadows and uh, there is, I think, uh, an Old Bill Bone in the deck, is there not? Yeah, there is. You might want to do that in the first action window during the opponent's marshalling, just to be safe. And let's see, so Leonard uh, on the other side has uh, Tyrion, one of the key cards, so no more ghoulies, can't get rid of him, you can only milk him if you can. Of course, Bowel is chosen as uh, the red door location, there is uh, some icon, including Castle Rock, which is great icon, provides plus three, uh, basically for the rest of the game, two cards in shadows, and we have Kevin. so what did Kevin do? Ah, okay, so I'm manipulating the the discard pile with uh, gold mine. You can discard the most costly location, in this case Castle Rock, and he just brings it in for free, which is a uh, nice interaction. And we are now in um, marshalling for uh, Agion here, who of course needs to do this in the correct order to um, take full advantage of this uh, plot. And the location that is reduced by two is the Iron Throne. So a three cost character can also come in for free and an attachment, um, either a traitor or, of course, uh, milk can all come in for free. And Sarimri, mm, not the card I would have marshaled. So this is um, a great card to put into shadows because with the time limit, once you get down to the, those five minutes and it looks like the game will. Uh, we land, you can uh, just go for it with Imri, trigger him and uh, yeah, difficult for the opponent, although in a heavy shadows deck maybe opponent can still play around that a little bit. So we have Throne in Chamber as well, which is uh, excellent here for uh, Agion in the long run and it will be difficult uh, now for Leonard to uh, gain any power in the early game. He just passes of course because any challenge he can do here is uh, yeah, going to lose power to, to that chamber probably and also uh, there is late summer fist and uh, plenty of reserve here to take advantage of any cards that are drawn. Yeah so uh, I know this Baratheon deck very well I think it it's uh, it's almost an exact copy of the deck we played uh, in the eight regions, and published it after the tournament. So the only changes really that have been made here are those that, um, yeah, to comply with the restricted list basically. So the restricted list after that tournament uh, added traitor to the crown and red priest. So loan from the iron bank that was in my deck that I played had to be swapped for Pintoshi and uh, the Red Priests are gone. Some changes in the character base uh, due to that, so there's additional copies of Delena, and there's some minor changes to the events, but other than, deck, other than that, the deck is uh, almost an exact copy. So, uh, yeah, I'm really fond of that deck and uh, would love to see it do well, but on the other hand, the Lannister Shadows deck also is interesting, so uh, 
we've seen Lanny Shadows mainly played with Banner of the Kraken in recent times and now the latest restricted list has again nerfed that Kraken deck a little bit so to play uh, yeah, basically a dedicated Shadows deck with uh, House with the Red Door is not very common and uh, would be interesting to see of course this deck uh, do its thing in this game but uh, I don't know my suspicion is that Baratheon is the favorite here not sure if uh, the players have done any tests and what the expectation is but um, uh, since those, those traitors are not terminal and uh, they can be put on anything that has a power icon. Lannister already has a slight problem with those power icons. So this deck can kill the opponent's board really well, of course, uh, with um, all the resets and uh, Sir Robert Strong and stuff like that. But um, to do power challenges, and even if you if you put the Hound in with uh, Flea Bottom every round, we, ha we saw that interaction in one of the previous rounds, so... Castery Rock can just uh, bestow, bestow that flea bottom every time, and then the hound, yeah, just comes into play, goes back to hand, and gold mine puts it back, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, having uh, a traitor in shadows, of course, you can uh, get the hound with that, and uh, still you do pretty well with um, with controlling the power challenge, and then. A throne in chamber really can only be disrupted by the red keep. So uh, first snow makes sense. There's no nothing that survives against these these two, and uh, yeah, getting Imri back. As I said, I would put him in shadows after this. And getting this uh, shadow priestess back also benefits again in the long run, and uh, the the. Vanguard uh, Lancer can trigger again, but the board will be gone, obviously, so question is, does he have anything that can survive? Otherwise, I guess it's just uh, putting as much stuff into shadows as he can, then something comes in in challenges. Mm, and Elton will s survive. First now, of course. And... Uh, Double use of the location. Or what's going on? Is that a take back? Because he didn't need it to uh, to gain gold. He just knelt it. There's nothing else to stand, so he can just stand the location and then use it immediately since. It uh, seems unlikely that uh, Leonard will win the uh, dominance over this Iron Throne. Otherwise, of course, you can uh, wait with Elrond and kneel it if it looks like that you might lose dominance, but uh, I don't think there's much chance of that. And I think this, uh, this card, especially the one that was just uh, put into shadows with the agenda, should probably be a character since you want something in play to protect Eldon from military claim. But you need to play around uh, stuff like Sir Robert Strong, of course, so... Mm. Not that easy. Unless, of course, you have Storm's End, which can turn challenges into power, but then uh, you need to get around the Red Keep, which could still be marshaled. Okay, so Eldon was not used on... <laughs> it says in the log he was used on... The Northern Encampment, and then the Northern Encampment did not actually gain any gold, it was just knelt. I think Leonard is right here, I think... Uh, I think uh, Argeon should have two more gold. Because he won't be able to trigger Elton any anymore. The limit was used. We see it quite clearly here. I 
Otherwise, of course, yeah, double use of black cells now, now that it's in play. If uh, two cards enter play, will be quite beneficial. Now he has six reserve and four cards will be going back. So not a, not a huge waste. And no PD in this deck, so both players will be getting probably some big gold with that trade routes. So just checking uh, three copies of Cersei, the six cost version. So that can uh, really get at the hand. But if you know that you're not playing against uh, or around barring the gates and uh, exposed duplicity, none of those decks are a factor here. You could play this deck in a way to stick anything you can into shadows. So there are a lot of non-shadow cards, of course. It's not uh, one of those decks that only plays shadow cards. We see here non-shadow characters. So Marshall, what you can, I guess, use one non-shadow card with the agenda to put it into shadows. And anything that has printed shadow, you just put into shadows. If it looks like Cersei is about to do her thing and you have no mix, of course. All the milks against Tyrion, difficult. And there is also siege preparation, so that round, if she hits the hand, is not really going to be the most effective play. So let's see how this round goes. We have Agion as first player and we have plenty of gold for Sir Robert Strong, who can get Eldon as well. Thus he put stuff into play from shadows to, to stop Tyrion and the military icon. He does. <laughs> but it takes his gold. And now it makes a difference whether he had two more gold or not, because um, there's two copies of Shireen and three copies of uh, Eldon, and you don't want either of these two to die, and I'm sure a military icon is lurking in shadows. Or in hand, could be the Hound. <laughs> but if uh, yeah, if Sir Robert Strong is the plan for Leonard, then uh, <laughs> he has an annoying situation now that he, uh, if he wants to do a military challenge, he needs to put him into play, if that's his only military option, without killing anything. And yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. But you you have your um, Tyrion. Try to get some kind of loop with him, put him back. So first of all, he's going to try to get stuff net. Now, there is Pinch of Powder, of course, in the deck, two copies. So if you just let it go, that's a problem. But if you try to defend it, then Robert kills Shireen and military claim kills Eldon with no close call in the deck. That's not fun. I would probably let it go and just take the the pinch if it's uh, in shadows. Should be gold to remarshal these characters. Boros in the discard pile, so still waiting for that flea bottom. He works with flea bottom as well. Bring something else into play. Although it's not one of those decks that has a bunch of weird uh, stuff it can find. So 
so no pinch and uh, since Agon did not take the bait nothing to kill with Robert, Mandon comes into play instead and he can do a military and beat Eldon but with uh, being our reserve yeah, no reason to kill anything here, so just discarding two cards. Devon has nothing else to find, Throne and Chamber are set up. And uh, Storm's End, okay, don't like to lose that one, but maybe there's another one. No, still needs to be careful here, does uh, Argon, because uh, the Iron Bank will have its due. Faction card still standing, and uh, then you would have gold for Robert. Ah, and this trigger still happening, so gold even without that, which means you kind of uh, you're stuck with letting military go on opposed to, and then I guess Shirin has to die. It's one of those characters that is always uh, under threat from that Robert Strong, so maybe if she dies, it's not uh, it's not a disaster. It seems like something that was. Uh, Inevitable anyway. Okay, so one dead card now in the deck, and uh, there is some unique stuff for Agion, and uh, over the course of the game, if uh, a lot of cards find themselves in the dead pile, of course it will make a difference. So what do we have here? Mandon goes back into shadows, okay, that should be annoying if that gets replayed continuously. And Robert Strong was the card, so right to play around him. Unfortunately now he cannot really do much can he with the military already gone <laughs> but there is a tie for dominance okay so well this should be standing really if if Eldon stood it then it should be standing and if uh, he didn't then he still has the trigger this round Now if you play a non-gold plot, of course, uh, non-gold plot, something that uh, doesn't have that much gold, makes a difference. Standing face, so what's being considered here could be Clever feint, or could be that Elden trigger that uh, <laughs> would be, yeah, the Iron Throne wouldn't let you trigger it if you already did it. I'm pretty sure that this round was affected by that uh, that weird. Uh, Eldon trigger in the marshalling phase. Something went wrong here. Either this should be standing or Agion should have had two more gold and he would have uh, maybe had a better round with that, without that. Either way, so there is a low gold plot to Harris since that's probably the, the only point in the game where it will actually work. Not that you want to uh, like uh, Robert Strong off the board, but since Tyrion is being annoying, may as well. And Petoshi will help uh, Agion's uh, economy here a little bit. And now Eldon stands the encampment. Okay, there's that at least.
yeah there is a 55 minute time limit and just looking at it now I have a strong suspicion that this game will not go to um, 15 power so this will be quite important here comes Mendon and what now oh okay now it now it starts to hurt so two characters gone with that and including Sarimri you're not getting him out of the discard pile again I would uh, treat Sarimri with more caution here because he is potentially a game winner and uh, yeah with that Pentoshi gold just uh, milking Tyrion <laughs> so that was the the first action was to stand the hmm to stand the location and then Leonard who is second player used uh, Mandon Moore so if milk had been the first action then uh, Tyrion couldn't be triggered to put a card into shadows now there is a rose road in shadows Bowers gains gold here uh, there is a lot of this um, uh, play with uh, gold in the Lannister deck because you have uh, Bowers gaining gold in weird phases if you bring zero cost locations out uh, or any zero cost card out I guess and you have cast the rock which states that if it's standing you may use you may spend that gold on Lannister cards as if it were in your gold pool and that goes for any phase so it will be standing un until you need it in marshalling and that means there is always plot phase gold if uh, you have uh, gold on cards and you should have gold on cards that uh, survive in place such as bars and uh, gold mine for instance and uh, possibly casterly rock itself it can also be put on the Lannister faction card which uh, it's not entirely clear from the, ru the rules that uh, whether it has the, the Lannister affiliation or not but it would be weird to say that it didn't so I think the ruling is that it does some connection problems which could also be important if the game goes to time Triggering Bowers twice to gain gold. There are eight cards in hand, so might as well. Although I think the most common thing in these uh, phases outside of challenges is usually to to dig for cards. But this time the situation is different. Plenty of cards and uh, well, not really struggling for gold, but uh, could use more. Okay, first now is gone. So here comes the Lena now. Dupes are what are needed because Morgulis is a thing, and uh, the Harris is a possible counter to Morgulis is uh, gone. Bastard of Night Song, not really safe from Robert either, but maybe you can uh, get him into shadow somehow, or uh, yeah, three cards in hand. If he's left in hand here, there's no goal to marshal him, then uh, he could be a hit within three climb. Any card that is left here could be, of course, there are only three. <laughs> Two cards, so 50-50, but we might see Cersei and, Cersei and then uh, all the cards are gone by default pretty much. Oh, 
one mandolin in play, one in the discard pile. And I'm sure Leonard will try to get him back into shadows at some point. Look for Tyrion, even though he's milked. So clever Faint can't put him back uh, into shadows if he's milked, since he doesn't have shadow. And uh, if you're going to use stuff like uh, Regent's Guard or uh, the Iron Bank will have Zeal, then you wouldn't uh, dupe him necessarily. So I guess the plan now is to play Morghulis at some point soon and have Tyrion survive even if he is milked. Yeah, and uh, two uniques here in place, so this will hurt if Morghulis is played. And Argyon struggling for cards, so I think he might need to play Siege Preparations very soon. That's basically a round where he does nothing and just concedes power. Now, last round we saw that Robert Strong with his 8 strength uh, just about beat the Iron Throne <laughs> to tie dominance. And uh, 12 gold in the gold pool here, so, and Tywin who might stay standing. And all of that is uh, a problem here for Argyon because he's not winning dominance by default. And that means uh, the chamber is not pulling power back, which was the plan. But uh, we could see Traitor to the Crown at some point, and putting that on Tywin, for instance, would help a lot. Also, we know that uh, some cards have gone back uh, last round, so Shadow Priestess is somewhere. I think this has been... Ah, this is the card in Shadows, never mind, so, okay. So that hits uh, Tywin and uh, Black Cells will hit another card. And if you go for the power icons here, that's still, uh, that's still pretty decent. What does he go for, is the question. Maybe just Tyrion. <laughs> All right, she's unprotected uh, from Morghulis, so let's see. Is there uh, any way to kill her here? No, Leonard not bothered. He has uh, the Hound to defend, and that returns the Hound to hand, and of course he has the four gold to bring him back. Not going well for uh, Agion. Okay, so what do you do here? Go for Intrix, see if you hit the Knight of Flowers or the other card. Not sure if Leonard knows the other card. We we had, did have first now, but I lost track of the cards. I don't think it's uh, it's known. It's one of the cards that was top decked, I think. And is this worth defending and risking Eldon? The problem is if if he gets killed by other means than uh, Morghulis, then of course Leonard doesn't need to play that Morghulis. He can delay it and that uh, that's not great. Four plots remaining, but only 23 minutes. He 
he has Margulis and, and Harris that are not going to uh, benefit him with this kind of board. Of course, he could have a clever feint, and then uh, it's a completely different story. You just uh, put uh, some useful cards back in shadows and play Morghulis on yourself, no problem. Okay, so Pinch comes into play on the Lena. I'm guessing that's going to gain gold. And now maybe we'll see. Yeah, killing Elton and this will uh, allow Leonard to trigger pinch since he is is he winning by five? No, he wins by two. He only has penny. Never mind. He could trigger it here if he really wants to. If he puts both characters into the challenge, but he doesn't because she has a an enter play effect, of course. <laughs> I think there are maybe there are only two. Edric and uh, the Bastard of Night Song. Yeah, I think that's the case, so she wouldn't even find anything. So you may as well put her back if you can. Unless, of course, you want to kill her with Morgulis. So losing Black Cells, which means this is uh, Bastard of Night Song still in hand. And here comes another challenge that leaves 13 for dominance against just the 8 from the Iron Throne. So unless there is a traitor to the crown, somewhere for Robert, which of course it isn't. <laughs> That's another dominance for Leonard, and again this stays net. Not a problem with trade route still in the plot deck, but uh, you can't play it with just one card in hand. You have to go for siege preparations to refill the hand and then you play trade routes, but uh, the game is uh, going away from you in the meantime. Plus, uh, here for Agion still is, of course, the Tyrion is milked, so until we see Clever Faint, he is now safe from Robert and safe from Mandon Moore. Which means he might try to do a, a good um, power challenge with Buster of Night Song. Unfortunately, as first player this time. And five gold. <laughs> now Eldon to stand in the encampment. What to do? I think what you do is you put uh, cards into shadows, have these characters defend, try to get your uh, hand to zero if you can, then draw seven, play trade routes next round, and uh, then try to start playing the game and hope it's not too late. Yeah. Okay, so mystery card here and Bastard Night Song in play. Is that the right sequence? Possibly, if that's uh, how the Econ works out, I guess uh, it could be, but uh, if uh, we have Morghulis then it kills this guy and Delena. Okay, so bringing Boros out of shadows in marshalling, but he finds nothing. Yeah, <laughs> so in Terrell and it's difficult to miss, but here it says non-Lannister Knight or Kingsguard. So they're basically all Lannister cards except Old Bill Bone and Kingsguards are only Mandon and uh, Sir Robert Strong, I believe. So not that easy to hit. And yeah, both already in play. 18 minutes to go. So what's the the plot that is not uh, to Harris and Morghulis here? Close call, I think. So Leonard could play this round and then play close call. 
before he needs to reduce his board. And Dagon will be a long way down before that, before then, and uh, there is a way to bring it back in a short time. For instance, if you have a power challenge with Buster of Night Song, maybe you have Storm's End in play to do another one. You have traitors on the opponent characters that have the power icon. You have Throne in Chamber to trigger. That's a, that's a decent swing. And if it's a Clash of Kings revealed, which difficult since uh, he's lacking Econ, uh, you can swing. Uh, swing it back in your favor quite considerably so let's not uh, call it uh, a win for Leonard just yet but he is in a good position and if he thinks he can win without wildering himself he will also have renown on Tywin potentially Twenty-five. What can you do with twenty-five? You can pinch. Okay, so she's going to be lost for the intrigue claim because he's doing that. I think. Well, depends. If he can get unopposed out of it, he is definitely doing it. If not, then it makes no difference since uh, siege preparations will refill the hand. And Elena, honestly, is not the best character for Agion to have because her trigger will miss and she is not a great body and she is not stopping any stand in this matchup. So if yeah, if this is opposed anyway, then I would consider just leaving her. And the sequence is slightly weird because I think the intrigue, the military claim would have killed Shadow, Shadow Priestess, wouldn't it? So doing uh, intrigue first means that uh, all challenges will now be opposed. Oh. All right. Plenty of gold to bring them back out. Yeah. So let's say everything dies here. Could have done this sooner to to get uh, two unopposed, I think, because you can do mend on end, as Robert Strong. Oh, we are still in the intrigue challenge, so if you kill her now, it will be unopposed, okay? Well, my prediction not going according to plan. Everything going exactly as planned here for Lannister and uh, Baratheon has not been able to do much. And uh, I think if he only had a traitor to the crown or two, it would have made a lot of difference because uh, you can put that on, on Tywin and Tyrion and use black cells and then maybe power challenge doesn't go through although the hound is lurking about you can use it to to try to stop that Robert Strong with his eight strength winning dominance as well and then you have the chamber triggers and half a chance with that but uh, there is no constant source of draw so after the siege preparations you see that uh, we had uh, 32 cards here and 34 so this is the the one big uh, big draw that uh, gets you all that you are likely to get over the course of the game but uh, 
uh, when you have bowels of course it's a constant source of draw if you use it for that instead of the gold uh, little by little with uh, a card or two in each round and uh, even though this is one of my favorite decks that's the one thing I dislike about it because you are re relying on top decking a little bit and you do use most of the cards to uh, good effect since they can come out of shadows for additional triggers stuff like uh, black cells but um, you're not guaranteed to see everything and uh, it's uh, yeah, very different to most decks that uh, this team and uh, the Chinese players in general tend to play I think the focus in that particular meta is uh, on uh, a lot of draw effects in the in the decks and this is uh, untypical and now do so if the game goes two more rounds so that Leonard is forced to Morgulis himself then he's found uh, protection for Tywin now of course uh, there is also the Harry so can't uh, survive with Tywin and a lot of other stuff So I'm slightly disappointed since this is basically a deck that I built with uh, minor ch changes. Would uh, have liked it. Uh, would have liked to uh, see it do better than this, but uh, yeah, not to be. Let's see. So seven gold with uh, trade routes and uh, some more to come, and the full hand now. Is there a chance to turn the game around? Unfortunately, past the night song is gone, and we haven't seen storms end yet. But one of the last two plots is going to be a Clash of Kings. <laughs> problem is if you uh, put the cards into play now, and then, yeah, no problem for Leonard to just play Morgulis and then you're back down to nothing, basically. And uh, there's still kill effect, so you, if you now play something like a duped Melisandre, we know that there is Robert strong in shadows, so she can't really uh, go for a challenge. more card drop that Kevin brings into play now with Lion Gate and uh, pretty much unlimited gold so what to do now if three of those cards are traitors to the crown that wouldn't be too bad you can put them on all of the the power three on three of the power icons and use black cells on the fourth one <laughs> and still you need to play around the hound so although better chance to win domains than with the chamber This isn't helping because he's uh, looks like he's going to lose on time, so he needs all the time he can get to turn it around. In the meantime, let's check the 11 spectators to expose everyone who is here watching and didn't want to join me on commentary. Ah, including the teammates of Leonard, of course. They are looking good for them. Yeah, always a uh, chance, of course, to agree to an extra round if uh, this kind of thing happens. I don't think Leonard will would mind that too much since uh, it look like looks like he's uh, going to win this regardless. Maybe not getting to 15 power depends if he can if he can push the unopposed through now against this uh, hand whatever comes into play here. Um, but uh, I think he can defend himself against that uh, clash of kings and. Pentoshi that is still coming.
<laughs> Penny loses her intrigue icon now, okay. Yeah, let's have a Wenger Lancer come on to defend military as well. No. Well, there could be one in shadows. Could be a traitor and a black cell's trigger then. Which is uh Yeah. It's a bit of stall. It's not great, but maybe. And we have the gold roads to bring the gold back to five, which is just what you need for that Robert Strong in shadows to push uh, on a post through. And does he have enough? I guess with the power trigger, even enough to bring a pinch out as well. And uh, the hound is. Uh, in the discard pile and flea bottom has gold so every chance to do a successful power challenge and uh, unopposed military and yeah one of the challenges either power or, or intrigue at least should be unopposed with uh, Robert and Pinch and this claim that will Presumably take the reducer. And yeah, keep going back to that opening round where something unusual happened with, uh, with that stand from Eldon. And this has been knelt throughout the game. Didn't stand for Eldon and didn't gain the two gold that uh, Agion could have used to stop this onslaught that basically started in that round. Well, he did say himself that uh, he thought the, s the board set was alright, was correct, so maybe uh, it's I that uh, is uh, mistaken here. Threatening Pinch and Robert. No way to avoid it really. Should, should uh, just defend here maybe. Yeah, force that card out and hope there is no clever feint so that at least uh, some stuff is in play uh, for that uh, Valar to Harris or Morgulis, whichever is chosen. There was some digging with this line gate and maybe we'll see some more with Bowers to possibly find uh, another clever feint. And if that gets played before Morgulis then uh, may as well forget it. Okay, so pinching, <laughs> pinching the acolyte, and the traitor on the hound. So pinch won't go through, and uh, but the hound will escape, won't he? I'm really struggling to to see what uh, what the sequence was here. So Bowers' reaction to bringing a card out of shadows, which was pinch, and then there is a, an action from Agion to bring traitor out of shadows, and then the Bowers trigger, and uh, nothing read in the chat log to, to say that someone did stuff uh, outside of the action window, so that's uh, that's a bit weird. Doesn't matter though. 
So power challenge is opposed, pinch is not triggered, and uh, Melisandre is still not going to. Well, she is going to defend. There is, there is the the goal to kill her. Okay, so forcing him out, and uh, there was sin in flames to know for sure that there isn't uh, a clever feint, right? Otherwise, that would have been the discarded card rather than the red keep. So. All of these will be in play now for Morgulis or Doheris to get them, but uh, <laughs> it will be 11 power to 0, so even if the players agreed to play 2 rounds instead of 1 because of the disconnections. So what to do? I would play Morgulis probably, because that leaves uh, Tywin and uh, Tyrion. If you play Doheris, well, you could play Doheris, get rid of Tywin, keep all the little ones. One Renown is not going to make that much difference. It's just going to drop you down to 10. <laughs> I think he could choose no cards at all and still win, but let's see what, what he does. And uh, keeps winning initiative. So... Uh, since this is open deck lists, I, uh, my reasoning for including peace and prosperity. So uh, you have a lot of two-cost locations and a lot of three-cost characters. So the, the gold works out to bring you basically eight worth of gold or, or at least seven. So it's, um, it's a good plot and uh, three beats uh, the Maiden, beats Late Summer Fist for initiative. So it works out, but... Uh, has an added bonus of uh, countering Summer Harvest. Opponent only gets two and you get eight and uh, it's great. But with open deck lists, that r particular reason, of course, is not going to work. Uh, well, it creates a mini game, I guess, uh, between this and Late Summer Fist and whatever the opponent has instead of Summer Harvest. So in a, in an open deck lists uh, situation, I would have... Uh, gone for something a little bit different here and if for instance if it was the maiden would have a slightly more chance to win uh, initiative you make Leonard go first then uh, he does his military uh, and then you play with whatever is left including of course the, the Omens calculation but to have an entire game with throne and chamber in play from round one and not being able to trigger chamber once is uh, quite a disaster and uh, yeah uh, marshalling phase is the point where she knew he concedes this one since uh, he has no solution and uh, good game win for Leonard and a win for team Hanover in uh, the team regional event 2022 Excellent. I'm still convinced that this is not as one-sided as uh, it was in this particular game. So if you play 10, I think the Baratheon deck should be able to win some of them. But uh, not to be on this occasion. So, uh, closing thoughts. Uh, we saw some games from this uh, tournament on my channel. The others you can uh, look up. Uh, they were streamed by uh, Zini. Some of them, uh, if you search for a channel called Live Thrones, you should be able to find some games from uh, the tournament. And if you are on Discord, of course, the links were posted there. And um, so this is the situation. Uh, I don't think there is anyone here to, to update this. So we won't see the um, crowning of the champion here. But House Hanover is uh, our uh, champion. And... Uh, Old Dungeon settles for second place. And a good preview of the upcoming World Cup that uh, starts in a month, where uh, a part of uh, these teams for sure will uh, form part of uh, Team China and Team Germany for that uh, World Cup. And those are, in my opinion, the two strongest teams, although there is some talk of Germany possibly uh, having two teams in the tournament since there is so much interest uh, in uh, playing and would be a shame not to uh, allow all the players to to join the tournament and uh, yeah, if that happens then uh, I think China becomes the favorite because uh, uh, splitting into two teams of course uh, uh, no 
country can really uh, afford that and still uh, compete with uh, China at this point in time, I don't think, because they have been really, really strong, won the, the last Battle of the Nations really convincingly. But okay, uh, let's not uh, discuss that too much. So uh, I think this is it for uh, the Team Regionals tournament. And hopefully we can bring you some of that uh, World Cup in uh, February and uh, not sure how long uh, it lasts. I think it's about a three month tournament. And hopefully we can bring you some of that on this channel. So thanks for joining me today and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.